manufacturer makes a car and they sell that car to a dealer and then a leasing company buys that car from the dealer and they lease it out to someone and they have a contract for it. And then at the end of the lease, the car enters the second-hand market and then eventually it gets scrapped. At all of the different stages of that journey, all of the different organisations have their own ledger. Everyone has their own copy of data. And if you were to ask a question, the same question of different companies, you might get different answers because people keep records in their own way. It isn't necessarily completely accurate. It isn't necessarily up to date. And this presents a lot of challenges. And so what we're trying to do with blockchain is to make the whole process of transferring assets quicker. So the first part is that it is a shared ledger, okay? One ledger, everyone has a copy, but every time something gets added to the, le to the ledger, write another line in your spreadsheet sort of thing, everybody's copy gets updated. Because it is a permissioned ledger, it has a lot of privacy built into it. You can decide exactly who can see what. So for example, for a normal transaction where you have, let's say, a whole load of car dealers using a blockchain ledger, then the dealers aren't meant to be able to see each other's transactions. They might want to see the provenance. They, want, they might need to see some basic information that actually at least allows them to know that the person who they bought the car from was allowed to sell it to them and things like that. So the point is you have control. You can decide who can see things and who can't see things. The smart contract bit is that, like I said earlier, you can actually codify the terms and conditions of the contract. So you can say, what are the various things that need to be in place in order for this transaction to complete? And only when those things are in place can the transaction actually happen. And then the last part is consensus. So it says there all parties agree to a network verified transaction. So what that means is everyone in the blockchain agrees to a transaction. If you think about it, that's not really practical. You wouldn't want everyone to have to agree every time a transaction is done. That's not realistic. However, you would at least want the parties involved in the transaction to both hit the yes, I agree this transaction has happened button. So if we think about what a car leasing network could look like with blockchain, you can imagine then that a, a, a car is manufactured and a record goes onto the blockchain. They sell it to the dealer. When they sell it to the dealer, bang, it's on the blockchain. The car has gone from manufacturer to dealer. And then when it goes to a leasing company, again, conditions of transfer. So the leasing company may have certain terms and conditions where maybe if they buy a certain volume, they pay a certain price, that can all be codified in the transaction. And then the car goes to the person who's actually leasing the car, the car. And again, you have a record of that on the blockchain. And then at the end of the lease, maybe it goes to an auction house and then someone buys it on the second hand market. And maybe they then want to get finance because they don't want to buy it directly from the, from the auction house. Maybe they need to borrow some money to pay for the car. So the company who's providing finance for that second hand car within reason, based on what they're allowed to see, can see the entire history of that car. The point is you have provenance. Through the entire life cycle of that car, what the blockchain is giving you is confidence that this valuable asset that's going from person to person, from organization to organization, is actually being looked after, is really what it should be and isn't some fake, and it actually has been looked after appropriately and what have you. And this is all in a single ledger. So what that means is that individual organizations don't need to have their own ledgers that they look after anymore. So if we actually think about the sort of benefits that uh, you can get through blockchain, the first one is to save time. It's really about the fact that when the blockchain says the transaction has happened, it has happened. So you can hand over the car keys, you can hand over the money, you know, whatever it may be removes cost because you can start to get rid of some intermediaries. So where typically you might have needed an intermediary 
to say that something has happened, now you can just look at the blockchain. Reduces risk. Because it's an append-only ledger, which is you can't tamper with, what that means is that if it's on the blockchain, you can trust that it's correct and that people can't be fiddling with the numbers afterwards. And therefore, what this all does is it increases trust. So the organizations who are all working together to provide cars to people can actually trust that the cars are the right cars and they are being looked after and that they are being bought and sold by the right people and so on. Thank you.